Glenn was a disgusting and ugly orphan boy who loved reading stories. One day, he came across a tale about a powerful magician facing off against a demon lord. The demon lord asked the magician why he fought so hard and strongly against him. The magician said he was fighting to protect something important to him. That's what gave him the strength to keep on fighting, no matter what. So, the battle raged on and the magician used some holy fire to finish off the demon lord, and that was that. As Glenn grew up, he wanted to be a magician just like the one in the story. He wanted to be a magician of justice. When he turned 15 managed to join the kingdom's army and became the strongest mage with his invincible original spell. One day, Princess Ermiana was taken away by some evil mages. The queen fell into despair and begged Glenn to save the princess. Glenn managed to find the princess and save her from the present evildoers. The princess started to scream, but Glean told her to be quiet, mentioning that there were still enemies around and promised to always protect her. There, he met his companion, Sarah, who really loved his personality. But there was a problem, Glenn started to hate magic. He wanted to originally be someone who could help people. But the only thing he did, was to dirty his hands with the blood of others. Despite his emotions, Glean never gave up on his dream because Sarah was there to support him. Until one day, the two went on a mission and she lost her life. Glenn couldn't protect her. From that moment, Glenn quit being a mage and ran away, returning to his adoptive mother's house, Selica, one of the strongest mages in the world. He freeloaded on her for a whole year, lying around and being a pathetic loser. Until Selica came up with a proposal, she wanted him to become a substitute teacher in a mage academy. He didn't want to do it claiming he wasn't qualified. But Selica insisted and threatened to fry him up with her magic. She even made a hole in a house to show she meant it. Glenn got scared and finally agreed. A few days later, we find ourselves in Fegite, a city in the Ilzano Empire. There's this girl named Rumia, who goes to that magical school. One day, she sees an old man on the street who hurt his finger. She's a nice girl, so she goes over to help. Using her healing magic, she fixes up the man's finger real good. He's so impressed and thanks her, saying how awesome she is. But here's the thing, using magic outside the school is a no-no. So she kind of playfully tells the man, hey, you gotta keep this a secret. And the man, with a playful wink, promises to do just that. One day, Rumia was walking to school, and her friend Sistine from the same academy joined her. They chatted about a professor who quit, and they were kinda worried about who their new teacher would be. As they strolled along, a boy came running and yelled at them to move out of the way. He was super scared he'd crash into them. Sistine, quick thinker that she was, used her magic shield to block him, but she sent him flying into the air, and he landed in a fountain. The girls rushed over to check on him, and to their relief, he popped out of the water and asked if they were okay. Now, on the roof of one of the academy's buildings, another girl was waiting for someone, but that someone was running late, and she was not happy about it. Back to Sistine and Rumia, they kept talking to the boy who'd bumped into them. He kept asking if they were okay, and then he dropped a kinda weird idea. He acted like it was their fault they bumped into him and said they might get in trouble unless they made a deal with him. He started checking Rumia's height and all that, which made her uncomfortable. So Sistine used her magic shield again and sent him flying into the air once more. This guy was just too strange. Meanwhile, the whole school was wondering where the substitute teacher was. The class was waiting, getting more and more impatient cause the class period was almost over. They were complaining and talking about filling a complaint with the student body cause it was so unprofessional. But finally, the teacher showed up, and guess what? It was the same guy that Sistine and Rumia ran into earlier. He acted like he didn't know them and introduced himself as Glenn. He seemed super not interested in teaching and started talking about his hobbies, which Sistine found pretty boring. In class, the new teacher, Glenn, wrote on the board that the students should do self-study because he was too tired. He even laid his head on the table and fell asleep. The students were super surprised, especially Sistine who wasn't going to let that slide. Meanwhile, another teacher who was worried about Glenn being late argued with the principal. He knew Glenn wasn't cut out for teaching the kind of students they had, and he said Glenn would just tell them to self-study, which is exactly what happened. Then, the principal dropped a bombshell. Glenn didn't even have a teaching license, but the principal trusted a powerful professor at the academy named Selica, who had recommended Glenn. Hallie, the teacher who was worried, called Selica a witch as soon as she walked in but she overheard him. She didn't care about being called a witch but didn't want anyone badmouthing Glenn. She scared Hallie into taking back what he said, and he ran away, stuttering an apology. Back in class, Glenn was trying to act like a teacher, but he wasn't taking it seriously. His handwriting was sloppy, and Sistine couldn't even read what he wrote, although Rumia didn't have any trouble. 
when a student asked about a spell translation. Glenn couldn't find it in the book and told her to figure it out herself. This made Sistine really mad, and she called Glenn out for being a bad teacher. He defended himself, saying he couldn't just make stuff up. Then the bell rang, and he left without giving them any homework or anything. The girls went to the locker rooms to change and get ready for their next class. Sistine was fuming about Glenn not taking things seriously, and Rumia was worried about her friend. Sistine needed some healing, so she jumped on Rumia's chest, and that made her a little less angry. Glenn got impatient and barged into the locker room while the girls were still changing. They screamed at him to get out, but he refused and wanted to talk about the cliché turn of events. He didn't want to be shamed for seeing them, and that made the girls kick him out and gave him a nosebleed. Later, Sistine sat by the window in the cafeteria and wondered why they cancelled the class Glenn was supposed to teach just because he got hurt. She felt like she was wasting time when she should be learning about the mystery of Mulgarius, a castle in the sky, to fulfill her promise to her grandfather. Then, Glenn showed up with his lunch tray, and Sistine was instantly mad. Rumia tried to start a conversation with Glenn about his food, but the tension was thick in the air. Glenn told her that eating was one of his favorite things, especially when he didn't have to cook the food himself. He described how delicious it tasted, and Sistine said she might try it one day. But Glenn was feeling generous and shared some of his food with her. She liked it a lot, and Glenn asked if it was all alright. At first, Sistine acted all grumpy and said it was none of his business. But then she told him that she ate lightly because she didn't want to fall asleep during class. She added that since he was the one teaching, she didn't mind falling into a coma. This caught the attention of the students around them, and Glenn asked if Sistine had something to say to him. Before she could reply, he quickly shoved a spoonful of food into her mouth. After swallowing, he took some of her food from her plate, which made Sistine pretty mad. She wondered if he really called himself a teacher with such behavior, and he just said it was temporary. The next day in class, Glenn did the same old self-study thing. He just didn't want to teach, he was super lazy and had no interest in trying. And the following days were no different. He seemed even less excited than before, like all he wanted was to get to class and take a nap on his desk. This really bummed out the students, and it totally frustrated Sistine. One day, Sistine had enough. She got up all annoyed and complained about Glenn's behavior. She said she came from a long line of nobles, and if she told her dad about this, he'd have Glenn fired. Well, Glenn surprised everyone. He took Sistine's hand and told her to go ahead and complain. He wanted to be fired. He never wanted to work at the school in the first place, but he couldn't quit because of Selica. He figured if he got fired, she wouldn't do anything to him, and he'd be out of a job, just like he wanted. This made the students super curious, and Sistine didn't back down. She challenged Glenn to a magic duel, right then and there. Education meant a lot to her because it was the path to solving the mystery of Mulgarius. She told Glenn that if she won, he had to change his ways, and she knew she'd win because he didn't respect magic at all. Glenn agreed, but he asked her if she'd be okay with his request if he won. It sounded kinda ominous. They took their duel outside, and all the students watched. Glenn said they'd only use shock magic, which is all about electricity. The students were wondering who would come out on top. Sistine gave herself a little pep talk to gain courage, and then she fired her first shot. It hit Glenn right on the mark, surprising everyone because they thought Glenn would be better. But Glenn, he acted like he gave her a chance on purpose. He tried to zap her back, but Sistine shocked him again and again. She asked if he couldn't cast the spell, and he pretended like he could but just wanted her to win. The students knew he was lying, but he acted like they were almost tied when she had zapped him three times, and he only got one on her. He even pretended like he never agreed to be a better teacher and just laughed it off before running away. The next day, Glenn still didn't take his classes seriously. He didn't care about keeping his promise to Sistine at all. Lynn, one of the students, asked him a question about magic because self-study wasn't working for her, and she wanted to understand better. But Sistine told Lynn not to ask Glenn for help because he didn't understand the greatness of magic. This made Glenn ask Sistine about the benefits of magic to humanity. He argued that fields like medicine or science could do the same things magic does. Sistine tried to defend magic, saying how amazing and truthful it was. But Glenn interrupted her and said that magic was only good for killing, explaining how effective it was in ending someone's life. This made Sistine super mad, and she slapped him before leaving the classroom crying. Nobody expected that to happen, and it shocked everyone. Later, Glenn went to the rooftop of the academy and reflected on his behavior. He and Sistine had different ideas about magic, and he probably looked down on her beliefs. He regretted upsetting her, even though he didn't admit it. He saw Rumia in the lab trying to practice magic on her own, so he went over to her. He wasn't happy about her using the lab without supervision, 
but he let her continue working on the magic circle she was creating. Rumia didn't know how to make it work, and Glenn told her it needed a lot of mercury. He got some and poured it onto the circuit, helping Rumia make her circle work. This got her really excited. After their experiment, Glenn and Rumia started talking. She asked him what he did before becoming a teacher. He said he was unemployed for a year and lived off of Selica. Rumia asked about what he did before that, but Glenn didn't want to talk about it. He started asking Rumia why she was interested in magic, and she said she wanted to repay a favor. She had been kidnapped by criminals years ago and was rescued by a powerful mage. That's why she wanted to learn more about magic. She also revealed that she had been living with Sistine and her family who had been kind to her. Before they parted ways in the evening, Rumia asked Glenn to apologize to Sistine because magic meant a lot to her, connecting her to her late grandfather. The next day, Glenn apologized to Sistine, admitting that his attitude was wrong, even though he didn't change his stance on magic and its usage. Everyone in the class was surprised, especially Sistine, who hadn't expected to hear those words from Glenn. Afterward, Glenn decided to teach the class how to use magic correctly because he realized they were doing it wrong. They were shocked because they didn't think he could do better than them, especially after his duel with Sistine. But Glenn used Shock Volt as an example and showed them how the way you cast the spell could affect the result. He demonstrated different results based on how he cast the spell, surprising everyone. Then, he told them that magic was about studying the heart and mind and how they could influence the use of magic. He even showed them that he could use Shock Volt with just one word, which was super impressive. He explained that the books they had been using were just for memorizing magic, but before memorizing it, they should understand it first. This changed a lot of the students' minds about him as a teacher and as a mage. Days later, Glenn was becoming more popular at the academy. Students from other courses were now coming to his classes because they heard he was a great teacher. After finishing his day, he headed to the academy's rooftop, thinking that teaching wasn't so bad after all. There, Selica appeared and congratulated Glenn on his progress as a teacher. Glenn said he was sorry for worrying her, and it made her smile. But then Selica told him that she had to attend a meeting with all the staff at the academy, so Glenn's classroom would be the only one in use, and they needed to have extra classes. Just as Glenn's students arrived and were about to talk to him about magic, he noticed he was being followed. Glenn asked the stranger to introduce himself, and a guy named Carol appeared, trying to hurt Glenn. Meanwhile, in another scene, Class 2 was waiting for their teacher to arrive, thinking he was late again. But then two more criminals showed up, led by a guy named Ray. They were looking for Rumia and decided to take her with them and use the other students as hostages. It turned out that Rumia was actually the Princess of Olzano, who everyone thought had died years ago. Back to Glenn, one of the criminals stayed with Sistine and planned to hurt her. He started to do bad things to her and made fun of her, saying she was acting tough. But then, Glenn suddenly appeared. The criminal tried to use magic to hurt Glenn, but it didn't work. Glenn had a special power called the Fool's World that could seal any magic in a certain area, making it disappear. He mentioned that it affected him too, so he couldn't use magic either. Then, Glenn beat up the criminal using army martial arts and easily defeated him. Glenn had actually defeated Carol with his bare fists before arriving at the academy. After Glenn defeated the criminal, he asked Sistine if she was okay. She started to tell him something, but he interrupted her, saying he shouldn't be a teacher with his dirty hands that he used to defeat the criminal. He felt like his hands were dirty. But then Sistine interrupted him and pointed out that his pants had fallen down, which made him feel embarrassed. Sistine then explained everything that had happened, how the criminals had taken Rumia, and showed Glenn the arm of the tied-up criminal with a tattoo of the Divine Wisdom Organization. Glenn contacted Selica for help, but she revealed that the Divine Wisdom Organization was filled with evil mages and couldn't assist. Glenn requested backup desperately, but Selica explained that she had no authority and couldn't do anything. The academy was sealed, and Glenn was completely alone. Sistine realized they couldn't get any help and felt helpless. She tried to run away to look for Rumia, but Glenn stopped her, knowing that she couldn't do it alone, especially with dangerous criminals around. Sistine started to cry, realizing that what Glenn had said about magic being used for evil was true, and bad people could do bad things with it. Glenn comforted her, promising to find the other criminals and save Rumia. The criminal they had tied up started laughing maniacally, claiming that Glenn was just like them, using magic for evil. But Sistine defended Glenn, saying he was a good person. Suddenly, several skeletal golems summoned by Ray appeared, and they attacked the criminal who was on their side. 
When the golems tried to attack Sistine and Glenn, Glenn struggled to punch one because he wasn't using magic. Sistine helped him undo his nullifying magic, allowing him to use magic to defend themselves from the golems. They quickly ran away, but the golems followed them closely. Before they could go any further, Glenn asked Sistine to prepare a spell against the golems. Sistine used a blizzard spell, which managed to stop the golems. Glenn began preparing a powerful spell called Extinction Ray, and released it, destroying all the golems and part of the academy. However, using such powerful magic left Glenn in bad condition. Ray entered the scene, and Glenn asked Sistine if she could cast a dispelling magic against Ray's weapons, but she needed time to regain her strength. Glenn pushed her into some bushes to fight alone. The duel with Ray began, and both displayed their abilities to end the fight quickly. Glenn tried to use a nullifying spell to stop Ray's swords, but it was already active, so he couldn't nullify it. He attempted another type of magic, and Ray tried to counter it. However, Glenn had tricked Ray, taking the attack head on. Sistine then appeared, undoing Ray's spell, allowing Glenn to attack him with one of his own swords, defeating him. Ray remembered who Glenn was and revealed that Glenn was a mage killer who had worked for the Empire. After mentioning this, Ray died, and Glenn fell unconscious from blood loss. Sistine tried to heal him with magic. After several hours, Glenn woke up and found Sistine unconscious after using all her power. Selica called Glenn after trying to reach him multiple times. She asked about the situation, and Glenn explained that Ray had been defeated, but the barrier was still up. Selica explained that the barrier was designed to keep people inside, meaning the criminals were still in the school. Glenn realized that the teleportation circles were being rerouted by the criminals to allow them to escape without releasing the hostages. Glenn decided to go look for Rumia on his own and stop the criminals at the teleportation circles. After some time, he arrived at the tower where Rumia was held. There, he learned that the mastermind behind all of this was Huey, the teacher who had given up his position for Glenn. Glenn wanted to fight Huey but Huey revealed that he had created a magic circle to teleport Rumia to their base. If Glenn wanted to save Rumia and the school, he had to stop playing games and undo the magic circle before time ran out. Glenn decided to use his own blood to break the circle, destroying each layer of the spell. However, when he reached the last layer, he ran out of mana. Rumia reached her hand out to touch Glenn, but the magic circle tried to stop her, hurting her finger in the process. Despite the pain, she managed to touch Glenn. Glenn saw this and realized that Rumia had the power to increase his mana. It turned out that Rumia was an amplifier, which meant she could do this. With her help, Glenn gained enough strength to destroy the magic circle. When he destroyed the circle, there was a bright light that spread throughout the school. Sistine saw this and knew where Glenn was. Afterward, Glenn confronted Huey and punched him, defeating him. Later, Glenn met with Selica, who revealed Rumia's true identity as the Empire's princess, someone who had faked her own death and was now living under a different name. Although Glenn wasn't surprised to hear this, he didn't really care about her identity or why she had faked her own death. When Selica asked him why he kept teaching at the school, Glenn admitted that he wanted to see the full potential of his students. After the academy was attacked, the news reached the royal family in the kingdom of Olzano, where Rumia's mother was the queen. The queen had been deeply worried about Rumia during the three years she had disappeared. Some members of the kingdom were concerned about the news becoming public, but they advised the queen on how to handle the situation. However, when Rumia was found, the queen was overwhelmed with relief and happiness that her daughter was alive and safe. The next day in class, Rumia and Sistine were trying to get their fellow students to sign up for a competition. However, the students didn't seem interested and lacked confidence in their magic skills. They were worried about humiliating themselves in front of the queen, who was rumored to be attending. Some students didn't even want to compete at all. Rumia and Sistine made their best efforts to motivate the students and convey the significance of the competition as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. But their attempts were in vain. Suddenly, Glenn burst through the doors, full of confidence and claiming to know how to inspire the students. He took charge, much to the girls' skepticism. Glenn assured the students that they would win the competition. He assigned them into categories and groups based on their abilities and strengths. Some students initially disagreed with Glenn's classifications, but he went on to praise their abilities while pointing out their weaknesses. This made them realize the value of their unique skills and how they could contribute to the competition. 
In the end, the students were impressed by Glenn's understanding of their strengths and weaknesses. Rumia and Sistine were also pleased with how Glenn had taken the initiative to get to know the students better and help them prepare for the competition. Despite their earlier disagreements, they began to see a different side of Glenn and appreciated his efforts to support the students. In the back of his mind, Glenn was quite impressed with how well he had been doing as a teacher lately. He realized that he had made a good impression on his students ever since he started taking his teaching job seriously. However, at the same time, he knew that he was broke and couldn't afford to live comfortably at the moment. So, Glenn decided to approach the headmaster and beg for an allowance or some kind of advance to help with his financial situation. Both the headmaster and Celica had mustaches, figuratively speaking, meaning they were both quite stern. They didn't want Glenn to receive any help from the outside. They wanted him to take responsibility for himself and make the most of what he already had. However, Glenn wasn't ready to give up. He believed that Celica was partly responsible for him ending up at the academy in the first place, so he kept pleading with them. The headmaster then mentioned a bonus opportunity that caught Glenn's attention. The teacher of the class that won the magic competition would receive compensation for instructing the best class. Glenn eagerly accepted this opportunity, primarily motivated by the potential reward rather than a genuine concern for his students. One of the students in his class didn't agree with how Glenn had organized them for the competition and suggested using only the best students to maximize their chances of winning. Glenn was secretly intrigued by this idea but couldn't openly support it. Sistine stood up for Glenn and defended his approach, emphasizing teamwork and utilizing all the students' abilities. During recess, Glenn stood outside, pondering the upcoming competition and how other classes might use only their best students. He watched as students from different classes began competing even within their friend groups about who would perform better. A fight broke out over the practice space, but Glenn intervened to stop it. Then, a student named Harley approached and questioned why Glenn's class hadn't reserved the practice spot. Harley held a strong grudge against Glenn due to his tardiness and irresponsibility. Glenn and Harley exchanged words, with Harley expressing hostility and telling Glenn to take his class elsewhere. Glenn instructed his students to practice near a tree, making do with the limited space. Harley continued to mock Glenn's decision to involve the entire class in the competition, believing that only the best students should participate as they did in previous years. This upset Glenn, and he decided to bet his entire three-month salary on his class winning, despite having doubts in the back of his mind. Harley, confident in himself and his students, accepted the bet and also wagered his own three-month salary on the competition. Glenn wasn't entirely convinced by his own decision, but he felt compelled to take the risk, given his financial situation. Sistine stepped in and stood up to Harley, telling him that he had no authority over the training grounds and that anyone could practice there. She even threatened to complain to the school board if Harley and his students kept bothering them. Harley and his group eventually backed down, leaving with a parting promise that Glenn's class wouldn't stand a chance against them. Sistine then motivated the other students, assuring them that with Glenn on their side, they could win the competition. This filled the students with confidence and excitement. In the days leading up to the competition, Glenn took his job seriously. He worked hard to train the students and help them study magic, making sure they improved their skills and got good grades. Winning the competition meant a lot to him, especially because he needed the prize money. Rumia and Sistine watched him from a distance, admiring his dedication. They couldn't help but feel that he had become the coolest professor ever, despite Sistine's initial reservations about him. The night before the competition, Rumia stood on the balcony, remembering the tragic day her family was killed. She held a pendant in her hand, a reminder of her family, even though she couldn't recall much about them. Sistine noticed what Rumia was holding but didn't press her on it. Instead, they focused on the upcoming competition and the need to practice hard to win. Sistine couldn't help but worry about Rumia, who might feel sad about not having her parents there like the other kids would. However, Rumia assured Sistine that she knew her real parents and that Sistine's parents were like family to her. This eased Sistine's concerns, and they both decided to have dinner with their parents. During dinner, their parents apologized for not being able to attend the competition due to other commitments. The girls reassured them that it was okay, but their father got emotional, thinking they were angels for forgiving him so easily. The day of the competition arrived, and the queen made her way to the event, hoping to catch a glimpse of her daughter from a distance. She had changed her pendant to one that looked similar to Rumia's and wore a different necklace. Before the competition began, 
The queen offered some words to bless the event, and Rumia noticed that she had a pendant similar to hers. Once the competition started, the students from various classes began to compete. To everyone's surprise, one of Glenn's students from class 2 managed to secure third place, and this got the other students from class 2 excited. Glenn himself was quite shocked but hopeful. However, class 1, led by Harley, started to mock them for their third place ranking. Harley eventually intervened and suggested they let class 2 enjoy their moment. Class 2 students became motivated and confident with Glenn by their side. But Glenn couldn't help feeling a bit uneasy. He was also quite hungry and realized that it was hard to stay motivated on an empty stomach. Celica, sitting next to the Queen, teased Class 2 for their surprising performance. The Queen asked Celica if Glenn was truly special, to which Celica replied that he had a knack for coming up with impressive ideas. As the competition progressed, Class 2 continued to excel and win their rounds, putting them in a favorable position. Glenn was impressed by how well his class was doing and he hoped to win so that he wouldn't have to give his salary to Harley. Now it was Rumia's turn in the mental defense competition. One student from class 5 tried to intimidate Rumia, thinking she couldn't handle it. But Rumia was determined to do her part for her class. One student from class 2 suspected Glenn of sacrificing Rumia because she excelled in healing magic but was chosen for mental defense. However, Glenn assured him that Rumia was mentally strong, which pleased Sistine. The mental defense competition began and the students faced a professor who was also the master of mental defense. The professor used his mental manipulation magic to quickly eliminate several students. Only Rumia and the student from class 5 remained. However, the professor's perverted comments about Rumia's appearance disgusted many, including the headmaster, who threatened to fire him. In the final round, called Mind Break, Rumia and the class 5 student faced off. The student from class 2, who had doubted Rumia earlier, was impressed by her mental fortitude. However, the magic they endured in this round was excruciating for both mind and body. Rumia began to falter and kneel, but the class 5 student remained standing. Glenn and Sistine encouraged Rumia to quit, as it was clear she was in pain. They praised her for her perseverance but insisted on her safety. However, before they could intervene further, it was revealed that the class 5 student was unconscious despite standing, making Rumia the winner by default. Class 2 emerged as the winners of the competition, and the students were overjoyed. They celebrated their victory, and even the queen, Rumia's real mother, was thrilled to see her daughter happy. The queen had abandoned Rumia but was content just knowing her daughter was happy. Celica urged the queen to talk to Rumia, if only for today. Two characters, Rel and Albert, appear, discussing Glenn's abandonment of the imperial court to become a teacher. One of them wants to confront Glenn, but the other reminds them that their mission to protect the queen from a suspicious guard is more important. They decide it's a one-person job. During a break, Glenn watches the students enjoying their lunches and snacks, wishing he could join them. However, he's very hungry and can't afford it. Lynn approaches Glenn and asks to switch out of the transmutation competition, fearing she'll perform poorly. Glenn encourages her to have fun and explains the spell to her. He even transforms into Rumia to demonstrate the spell, impressing Lynn. He assures her to do her best and that he'll handle anyone who gives her a hard time. Sistine rushes to Glenn, thinking he's Rumia, and offers him food. Glenn can't resist and tries to eat, but Rumia arrives and uses her magic to turn him back into himself. Sistine hits him with her magic, and he ends up in the bushes, feeling embarrassed. Rumia brings Glenn a lunchbox, saying someone special made it for him. She doesn't reveal who, but it's implied to be Sistine. Glenn remains oblivious to the fact that he might be the jerk mentioned and thanks Rumia before heading back to the competition. The queen unexpectedly appears, surprising Glenn, who used to work as her guard. She apologizes for how he left his job, and they chat briefly. Glenn asks why she's there without her guards, but she doesn't answer. Instead, she addresses Rumia as Uniana, mistaking her for someone else. Rumia apologizes for the confusion and rushes back to the competition. The queen leaves and asks Glenn to take care of Rumia. At the competition, the queen is surrounded by her guards, and General Commander Zelos approaches her, apologizing and requesting her to come with them. The mysterious characters reappear, and one suggests they wait for the right moment to charge their enemies with a full frontal assault. Class 2 continues to dominate the competition, winning another event. Glenn, however, is distracted, thinking about the former princess who was erased from existence due to her special power. Sistine approaches him, worried about Rumia's absence. Glenn promises to find her and leaves Sistine to handle things while he's gone. Before he departs, they playfully discuss the delicious sandwiches from earlier, causing Sistine to blush. Glenn finds Rumia sitting alone under a tree, 
holding an empty locket from the other night. She wonders if it's weird to hold onto a locket with nothing inside. Flynn reassures her that what it means to her matters more than what's inside. Rumia asks if he knows the truth, if he believes she and the queen are related as mother and daughter. Glenn says yes. Rumia shares her understanding of why the queen abandoned her due to the curse she was born with, but she can't forgive her completely, even though part of her wants to call her mother. She also thinks about Sistine's parents, who raised her as their own, not wanting to betray them. Glenn tells her that people often have regrets no matter what decision they make and advises her to do what will make her happy. He asks what she wants, but she's unsure. He recounts his time serving the kingdom as a mage under the queen and how he noticed the locket always meant so much to her. He suggests Rumia starts with the locket and tells the queen how she feels. She's scared and asks him to accompany her, to which he agrees. Suddenly, Imperial guards arrive and accuse Rumia of conspiring to assassinate the queen. They try to execute her immediately. Glenn steps in, but they warn him to stay away. They inform him that the order came from the queen herself. Rumia surrenders, but Glenn questions the lack of a trial. When he tries to protest, they strike him with their swords and tie Rumia to a tree. Rumia accepts her fate, knowing this day was supposed to have passed. A blinding light appears, taking down the guards. Glenn arrives to rescue her. Rumia worries that he might have hurt the guards, but Glenn reassures her it's just a blinding light, hurting their eyes. More guards appear, and Glenn uses his magic to save them both. They run on the rooftops to find a hiding spot. Glenn contacts Selica to find out the situation, but she can't help and tells him he's on his own. As he contemplates a solution, the two mysterious characters reappear and rush towards him with their swords. Glenn seems to recognize them. After talking to Selica, Alina reveals that she placed a special collar on the queen, which is actually the necklace Rumia possesses. This collar has the power to kill the queen if she rebels against Alina. The only way to break this spell is to kill Rumia. Glenn realizes he's the only one capable of saving the queen. Suddenly, Albert and Rel appear in front of Glenn. Rel attacks him with a sword, forcing Glenn to defend himself. However, Albert intervenes by striking Rel, and Glenn scolds her. Glenn explains that Albert and Rel belong to the court, an organization that serves the kingdom, and both Selica and Glenn were once members. The two of them explain the situation regarding the queen and Selica. After a chat, Glenn asks his former colleagues for help, revealing his plan to present himself to the queen and trust Selica to handle the rest. They agree to assist him. As Glenn and Rumia evade the Queen's guards, Albert and Rel decide to return to the stadium. They inform Class 2 that they will guide them to victory. At first, the students are skeptical of these new teachers who are total strangers. However, when Albert and Rel relay Glenn's message, the students realize they can trust them. They decide to win the competition for themselves and ensure Glenn doesn't tease them if they lose in his absence. The students of Class 2 start winning several games, tying the score with Class 1. Lynn excels in her transmutation magic competition, tying with Class 1 as well. Everything comes down to a final duel, with Sistine fighting her opponent using magic. After a few minutes of struggle, Sistine manages to defeat her opponent, leading Class 2 to victory in the competition. After the competition, Albert and Rel approach Alicia to receive the medal. However, they shock everyone by revealing their true identities. Glenn and Rumia had switched bodies with Albert and Rel, leaving the Imperial Guards confused. Selica quickly sets up a protective barrier to keep the guards at bay. Glenn starts questioning their intentions regarding Rumia. Zelos informs them that Rumia must die to save the queen and her people. Alicia, surprisingly, gives the order for Rumia to be executed, leaving both Rumia and Glenn in shock. Glenn had initially thought the queen wanted to save Rumia in a different way, but now he realizes she can't tell the truth. Rumia is devastated by Alicia's words. However, Glenn sees through the deception and attacks Zelos, knocking him down. Alicia then removes Alina's collar, as Glenn had managed to deactivate the curse using the Fool's World magic. After this, Alicia hugs Rumia, apologizes, and reveals her true feelings, leading Rumia to accept her. Meanwhile, Albert and Rel encounter Alina, who reveals she now belongs to the Divine Wisdom. Before they can do anything, Alina escapes using her magic, putting an end to the conflict. Later, Glenn and Rumia have a private conversation where it's revealed that the powerful mage who saved Rumia in the past was actually Glenn himself. The queen had asked him to rescue her daughter when she was kidnapped. To celebrate their victory, Glenn and Rumia join the other students at a restaurant. However, Glenn realizes that they've spent all the money they recently earned, which saddens him. The next morning, Glenn and Sistine kickstart the day with some intense hand-to-hand -hand combat training. Sistine is a bit frustrated because she was hoping for more magic training, 
But when Glenn explains that he's preparing her to protect Rumia, she understands and appreciates his efforts. Later, Rumia and Sistine come across Glenn, who looks pretty tired. While chatting, they suddenly encounter Rel charging at Glenn with her heavy sword. Rel announces that she's going to be Rumia's new bodyguard and has infiltrated as a new student in Glenn's class. However, she's not interested in guarding Rumia. She wants to protect Glenn instead. Glenn firmly tells her that her duty is to protect Rumia, scolding her for her refusal. Glenn then introduces Rel to all her new classmates. She struggles with socializing and answering simple questions, but Glenn helps her out. In an unexpected twist, Rel confesses that she's in love with Glenn, leaving the girls excited and the boys dismayed. During magic practice, Sistine gives it her all. When it's Rel's turn, she struggles with using the Shock Bolt spell properly. She can't hit her target with precision, so she asks to use a different spell. She demonstrates an alchemy spell that creates a large, heavy sword, and she impresses and frightens the other students by throwing it accurately at the target. As Rel tries to adapt to her new student life, she hangs out and eats lunch with Sistine and Rumia who assure her that she can take it slow and enjoy her meals because she's no longer in the military, but in school. Over time, she forms a strong friendship with Sistine and Rumia, which makes Glenn happy. A little while later, Glenn catches up with Selica, and they discuss how Rel has been fitting in with her fellow students. Selica suggests that teachers should also help students with social skills, and Glenn agrees, planning to make the upcoming field trip enjoyable for the students. Days later, Class 2 gets ready for a field trip to the Cineria Islands, where they will visit an alchemy laboratory. On the island, Glenn encounters a strange vendor who turns out to be Albert. Albert mentions that he is the real guardian of Rumia and warns Glenn to be cautious of Rel, as she can be very dangerous. Glenn doesn't pay too much attention, thinking that the past should stay in the past, but Albert advises him to be careful. Later, the class has fun at the beach, playing volleyball and enjoying their vacation together. Glenn joins in the volleyball game with his students, and they all have a great time. In the evening, Rel is with the girls, watching Glenn and the boys goofing around and trying to peek into the girls' hotel rooms. She's surprised to see Glenn having so much fun because he used to be gloomy at the academy. The girls invite Rel to play cards with them, and she joins in. Sistine and Rumia are happy to see her fitting in well. Later at night, Rel confronts Glenn and asks him why he left the court. She claims to know the reason but doesn't understand why he had to go because she lives only for him. This angers Glenn, and they argue. He tells her that if her brother were still alive, he would want her to live for herself. The argument escalates, and Rel starts feeling jealous of Sistine and Rumia, thinking that Glenn abandoned her for them. Eventually, Rel leaves the beach in tears, leaving Glenn feeling guilty and thinking that things never go as planned. The next day, the class heads to the laboratory for their field trip. On the way, Sistine accidentally mentions Glenn's name which distracts Rel and causes her to trip. Sistine and Rumia try to help, but Rel tells them not to touch her and says she hates them. Glenn arrives and explains to the girls that Rel is upset because of him, and he apologizes to both of them. At the laboratory, the director, Burks, welcomes the class and gives them a tour. He explains that the laboratory is involved in experimenting with life, including creating chimeras by combining plants and animals. Sistine and Rumia discuss the abandoned research on reviving people, which was deemed impossible. Burks mentions the Revive Life project, which involves cloning a deceased person using their genetic code, an astral code, and an alter ether. Glenn adds that the project was discarded because it required sacrificing many lives. Sistine asks what else is needed, and Burks mentions that an original magic possessed by only a few people is required. Later, the students return to the hotel. Rumia wonders about Rel's thoughts and if she can talk to her. Sistine calls Rumia for dinner, and when she approaches Rel, Rel gets upset and goes to the beach, crying. Glenn tries to console her, but she tells him to shut up and runs off. At the beach, Rel blames Sistine and Rumia for taking Glenn away from her while crying. The girls are concerned, and Glenn explains why Rel is behaving this way. The girls promise not to give up on her. Glenn decides to look for Rel himself. While searching for Rel, a man named Rainer appears on the beach, revealing himself as Rel's older brother. Rel thought her brother had died years ago. Meanwhile, Albert spies on Rel and decides to intervene in her meeting with Rainer. However, Alina appears to stop Albert, leading to a fierce battle between them. Back at the hotel, Sistine and Rumia patiently wait for Glenn to return with Rel. They believe that Rel truly wants friends and hope that Glenn will bring her back. Sistine goes to get food for when Glenn and Rel return. At the beach, Rainer tries to manipulate Rel into killing Glenn and capturing Rumia, as he's enslaved by an organization and promises to free her if she complies. But Glenn arrives and exposes Rainer as a member of the Divine Wisdom 
deciding to defeat him to protect Rel. Glenn asks for Rel's help, but she impales him with her sword, thanking him before leaving him critically wounded. Albert notices Glenn's injury but gets distracted, allowing Alina to escape. He then sees Rel heading towards the hotel where the girls are. Minutes later, Sistine finds Rel in her room, covered in blood. Rumia is unconscious, and Sistine tries to stop Rel but is paralyzed by fear. She can't do anything as Rel takes Rumia away. Sistine justifies not fighting Rel, fearing she might hurt Rumia, but deep down, she knows she was just scared. Albert appears with the dying Glenn, asking Sistine for help. She's initially doubtful and afraid but eventually gathers her courage. She performs CPR on Glenn while Albert casts a reviving spell. Sistine gives it her all, and Albert instructs her to stop feeling sorry for herself as time is running out. Meanwhile, Rumia is held hostage by the Divine Wisdom Organization, where she meets Raynor and Rel. When she asks about Glenn, they reveal the truth, and Rel apologizes, expressing her dedication to her brother. After waking up, Glenn learns from Albert what has transpired. He's amazed by Sistine's strength in helping to revive him, despite their initial disagreements. Albert suggests involving Sistine in rescuing the princess, but Glenn refuses, considering her just a kid. Albert reveals that Burks was working with Raynor and Alina, and mentions the need to stop Rel. But Glenn wants to give her another chance, believing she's confused and deserves to know the truth. They argue about whether Rel would listen to Glenn over her brother, but Glenn is determined to save her, even if it means fighting. Albert gives Glenn his old revolver as payback for abandoning them at the court, and they decide to rescue Rumia. Meanwhile, Rumia is imprisoned, and Burks plans to use her original magic for the Revive Life project, causing her pain. Rhaenyra tries to comfort Rel, who seems sad. Alina realizes Glenn and Albert have tracked them, and Burke summons Chimeras to stop them. But Glenn and Albert defeat them easily. Back at the hotel, Sistine blames herself for letting Rel escape with Rumia, and feels inadequate despite her training from Glenn. As Burke's defenses falter, he confronts Glenn and Albert personally, transforming into a giant chimera. Albert insists that Glenn go ahead, as he can handle Burks alone. Glenn reaches Rumia, but Rel steps in between to protect her brother. Glenn tries to talk to Rel, but she keeps attacking him. Glenn dodges her attacks, and Rumia reminds Rel of their happy moment stargazing at the beach. This makes Rel hesitate, and Glenn seizes the chance to ask if she knows her brother's name. Rel doubts herself since she can't remember his name and Glenn uses this opportunity to immobilize her with a gravity spell after shooting her with his revolver. Rel begins to recall her true origin, revealing that she's the first successful experiment of Revive Life. She's a clone of a girl named Elushia, whose older brother Sion was killed by Raynor when he tried to stop the project with Glenn's help. Glenn arrived too late to save Sion and Elushia but rescued Rel, treating her as if she were Elushia. Glenn charges at Rhaenor, destroying the machinery holding Rumia captive. He attempts to eliminate Raynor with a spell, but Raynor is saved by three emotionless copies of Rel created by him. These copies attack Glenn and Rel as per Raynor's orders, but Glenn defends them and tries to bring Rel back to her senses. He tells her that she has new friends and a reason to live, prompting Rel to stand up. Rel begins to eliminate her copies one by one. Meanwhile, Albert uses his fire magic to defeat Burks, reducing him to ashes quickly. Glenn uses the Fool's World to nullify Raynor's spells and defeats him with one blow. After the battle, everyone returns to the island safely. Sistine forgives Rel for her actions, welcoming her back as a friend. They all enjoy their time on the beach, and Glenn and Albert watch over them, realizing that the students' happiness is why Glenn fights so hard. The kids were playing with a ball on a sunny day, and the ball rolled over to where Glenn and Albert were sitting. Glenn picked up the ball and threw it back to Sistine, one of his students. Albert, being his usual self, made a comment that Sistine looked like someone, but he didn't elaborate. Meanwhile, Alina had returned to the Divine Wisdom Grand Master, sharing the news that she had acquired the magic for reviving life. It seemed like they had some big plans in the works. Later, they all returned to the city and Rel began living in Sistine's house with Rumia. Sistine's parents treated her kindly, and Rel tried her best to adjust to her new home. One night, while standing on the balcony with the girls, Rel sincerely apologized for her past actions. Sistine and Rumia reassured her that they had forgiven her, and that they were precious to her. The following day, Sistine headed to the library to research Mulgaria's castle. She bumped into Selica, who encouraged her studies on the castle's history. Glenn also appeared and thanked Sistine for saving him during their previous adventure. But Sistine blushed, remembering the kiss she gave Glenn while administering CPR. This made Rel angry, thinking that Glenn had done something wrong to Sistine. 
she chased Glenn around the school with her sword, ready to defend her new sister. During the chase, Glenn stumbled upon a carriage, but a spell cast by a man named Leos saved him just in time. Leos introduced himself as a new teacher at the academy, and mentioned that he was engaged to Sistine since their childhood. He praised Glenn for his teaching methods and invited him to observe his class. Glenn attended Leos's class and acknowledged that Leos was a good teacher. However, he noticed that Leos's methods could be dangerous for the students. Rumia sensed Glenn's disapproval, but the other students were impressed. After the class, Leos invited Sistine for a private conversation. Rumia asked Glenn to eavesdrop on their conversation, so they did. Leos proposed marriage to Sistine, but she declined, as she didn't want to give up her dream of exploring Mulgaria's castle. Leos advised her to abandon that dream, saying it was impossible to achieve. Glenn came out of hiding and told Sistine to follow her heart. Leos didn't like Glenn interfering and told him to stay out of his business. In response, Sistine decided to lie and told Leos that she was Glenn's girlfriend, surprising both Glenn and Leos. Glenn decided to play along, making up more lies to frustrate Leos, who thought Glenn was a fool. In the end, Glenn challenged Leos to a duel by throwing down a glove, and Leos immediately accepted the challenge, returning to his class with a determined look on his face. Glenn gathered all his students to talk about the upcoming magical body contest, which Leos had turned into a big group competition between their classes. He was determined to win this contest, and he had a special reason for it. He told the kids that if they won, he could marry Sistine and never have to work again because she came from a noble family. The students were surprised by this revelation, and some of them even giggled at the thought of their teacher getting married. Glenn didn't seem to mind their reactions, he was focused on winning. Later, Glenn met up with Albert in a bar and shared his plans with him. Albert couldn't believe it. He thought Glenn didn't really love Sistine and that this was just a crazy idea, but Glenn was serious about it. During their conversation, Albert brought up a serious matter. He warned Glenn about a dangerous drug called Angel's Dust that was being distributed in the city. This drug could turn people into puppets, controlled by someone else. Glenn was surprised to hear about it, as he thought this drug had disappeared a long time ago. Albert urged Glenn to stay away from anything related to this drug, but Glenn was determined to investigate. Albert then mentioned a woman named Sarah and pointed out that Glenn saw similarities between her and Sistine. This made Glenn think about Sarah, who had been a former colleague in the court. She had supported his dream of becoming a mage of justice. Glenn's mind was filled with memories of Sarah, and he couldn't help but feel a connection between her and Sistine. He knew he had to find out more about Angel's Dust and what was happening in the city. Finally, the day of the duel between classes 2 and 4 arrived, with Glenn and Leos as the representatives. Hallie, the referee, explained the rules of the duel to everyone. He said that the team that either captures the enemy base or defeats the representative from the other side would win. However, he also mentioned that the battle would only last for three hours. Leos took a moment to talk to Sistine before the duel started. He told her that he wanted her to give it her all and that he would prove to her that he was worthy of her heart. It sounded kind of romantic, and Sistine blushed a little. On the other hand, Glenn had a very different message for his class. He told them that they needed to win so that he could marry into money. The students couldn't help but chuckle at his blunt and somewhat selfish goal. The tension in the air was palpable as the duel was about to begin. Both teams were ready to give it their all, and the students from classes 2 and 4 faced each other with determination in their eyes. Sistine was torn between her loyalty to Glenn and her concern for Leos, who seemed genuinely interested in her. As the duel started, the students from both classes unleashed their magical powers. Spells flew through the air, creating dazzling displays of light and color. Glenn and Leos faced off, each using their unique magic to try and gain the upper hand. Sistine watched with bated breath as the battle raged on. She knew that this duel was not just about winning, it was about proving one's worth and determination. Glenn was determined to marry Sistine and never work again, while Leos was determined to show Sistine that he was the one for her. The three hours seemed to pass in a blur as the students fought with all their might. It was a fierce battle, with both sides refusing to give in. Glenn and Leos continued to clash, their magic colliding in a spectacular display of power. In the end, it was Glenn's clever tactics and resourcefulness that allowed his team to capture the enemy base and secure victory for Class 2. Glenn was proud of his students for their hard work and performance. On the other hand, Leos didn't take the tie well. He started scolding his students for losing, which meant he wouldn't get to marry Sistine. Glenn couldn't stand to see this and stepped in. Leos threw down his glove, challenging Glenn to a duel once more. Glenn accepted without hesitation. He realized that Leos wouldn't give up on Sistine and was trying to make her quit her studies and join him. 
Glenn was determined not to give up on the idea of marrying into Sistine's wealth. But just as they were about to fight, Sistine intervened. She wanted to have her say in the matter. With a determined look, she slapped Glenn, feeling like both he and Leo's were treating her like an object. Seeing this, Rumia decided to step in as well. She talked to Sistine and assured her that Glenn wouldn't marry her just for money. This made Sistine reconsider her stance, and she tried to talk to Glenn. Rumia also wanted to speak with Glenn because she had a strange feeling when she met Leo's. It reminded her of the creepy feeling she had when she encountered Burks. There was something off about Leo's, and she wanted to figure it out. In a secret meeting, Leo's met with a man named Jadis. They talked about Leo's plan to marry Sistine and get rid of Glenn. Leo's wanted his family to gain more power, securing his position as the next leader. Jadis found this plan amusing. Meanwhile, back at the academy, Glenn was lost in thought. He mentioned the name Sarah out loud. Sistine overheard and asked Glenn who Sarah was. She also wanted to know why he challenged Leo's to a duel. At first, Glenn tried to hide the truth, but then he decided to be honest with Sistine. Glenn told Sistine that she looked a lot like Sarah. He explained that when he was a child, he dreamed of becoming a mage of justice. But he gave up on that dream when he saw how tough the magical world could be. It made him resent magic. Sarah was the one who helped him keep going. She supported him. But sadly, she died on a mission that Glenn couldn't protect her on. After that, Glenn decided to leave everything behind and become a slacker. He challenged Leo's because he didn't want to see someone else give up on their dreams. It reminded him of when he lost hope. Sistine was relieved to hear that Glenn's motivation wasn't just about money because, in her heart, she knew he'd never give up on marrying into wealth. Sistine told Glenn that achieving greatness was tough and sometimes she struggled to keep going. But because Glenn believed in her, she would keep moving forward. She understood that with Glenn by her side, they could overcome any challenge together. As Glenn and Sistine were having their heart-to-heart -heart conversation, their moment was suddenly interrupted by Leo's. He boldly stated that he knew all about Glenn's past. This made Glenn really angry, and he warned Leo's not to say another word. But Leo's didn't listen to Glenn's warning. Instead, he spilled the beans and revealed that back in the court, Glenn was known as the Fool. Hearing this nickname infuriated Glenn, and he attempted to attack Leo's. To Glenn's surprise, Leo's was skilled in military martial arts, and he easily stopped Glenn's attack. It was like nothing Glenn had ever seen before. But that was just the beginning of the surprises. Leo's summoned strange beings called tulpas, and these creatures started to hurt Glenn. It became clear that Leo's was incredibly powerful, way more powerful than Glenn. The tulpas left Glenn on the ground, defeated and hurting. Leo's then told Glenn to leave, and with a heavy heart, Glenn got up and walked away. He knew he couldn't win this battle. Leo's didn't stop there, though. He turned to Sistine and threatened her. He told her that if she didn't marry him, he would reveal the secret of Rumia and Rel to the entire empire. This secret could put both Rumia and Rel in great danger. Sistine felt trapped. The boy she had grown up with, the one she used to know, was no longer the same. He had changed into someone she couldn't recognize. She was scared of this new version of Leo's. With a heavy heart and under immense pressure, Sistine had no choice but to accept Leo's proposal. She agreed to marry him, even though it was not what she wanted. The next day arrived, but Glenn didn't appear for the duel, making Sistine feel like she was betrayed. Not only that, but Glenn also didn't return to the academy after last night. The news spread quickly throughout the academy. When the students of class 2 heard that Sistine had accepted Leo's proposal, and was going to be married to him, they were taken aback. They knew Sistine had dreams and ambitions that she had been working hard to achieve. This sudden change in her life was unexpected. Confused and concerned, Sistine's classmates approached her to understand what had happened. They couldn't believe that she had given up on her dreams so easily. They asked her why she had made this decision. Sistine looked at her friends with a hint of sadness in her eyes. She explained that sometimes dreams and reality didn't align. Her dream of exploring Mulgaria's castle had always been a distant goal, and now she had to face the reality of her situation. Leo's, her future husband, approached them, and Sistine went with him without resisting. Her friends watched as she walked away with Leo's, and a sense of disappointment hung in the air. They couldn't help but worry about her in the path she had chosen. Among the concerned faces was Rel who had grown close to Sistine during their time together. She could see that Sistine wasn't happy with her decision. A strong desire to protect her new friend welled up inside Rel, and she made a move to go after Sistine and confront Leo's. However, Rumia, who had a deep understanding of the situation, gently grabbed her hand stopping her in her tracks. She explained that Glenn had a plan, 
and they needed to trust in his judgment. Rumia knew that Glenn had always been there to protect them and guide them through difficult situations. He had a reason for allowing Sistine to make this decision, even though it seemed against her will. They needed to have faith in Glenn's wisdom and wait for the right moment to act. So, as much as it pained them to see their friend in this situation, the students of class 2 decided to trust in Glenn's plan and patiently wait for the right time to make their move. They knew that their teacher had never let them down before, and they believed that he had a plan to bring Sistine back to them. The days went by, and the academy felt different without Sistine's presence. Her absence weighed on everyone's hearts, but they held on to the hope that Glenn would come through for them, just as he always had. Days later, the day of Sistine's wedding to Leo's arrives. She stands there in her wedding gown, but in her heart, she remembers the threats and fears that Leo's had imposed on her. Despite her reluctance, she decides to go through with the wedding and accepts Leo's as her husband. As the ceremony is about to reach its climax with a kiss, a sudden interruption occurs. Glenn bursts into the scene, deploying a smoke bomb that shrouds the area in thick smoke. Taking advantage of the chaos, he swiftly grabs Sistine and makes a hasty escape with her. While fleeing, Glenn entrusts Rel with the task of protecting Rumia, a responsibility she readily accepts. Once they are safe, Glenn begins to explain to Sistine that he had been absent to prepare for a confrontation with Leo's, fully aware that he might not win. Their conversation is abruptly cut short as infected individuals under the influence of Angel's dust appear. Sistine attempts to explain the true reason behind Leo's's desire to marry her, but the infected people's arrival interrupts her. Meanwhile, in another part of the city, Albert and two members of the court are seen dealing with more infected individuals who have infiltrated a church. Glenn, overwhelmed by the situation, becomes increasingly agitated as he recalls a past mission he shared with Sarah. They had faced a horde of people affected by Angel's dust and were unable to save them all, resulting in Sarah's tragic death. The presence of the infected and the memories of that fateful mission weigh heavily on Glenn's mind, as he knows that they are facing a dangerous and unpredictable threat. In the midst of the chaos, Glenn recalls his past and the mission with Sarah. Determined to protect everyone, he takes action to eliminate the infected individuals, a move that startles Sistine. Suddenly, Leo's reappears, but something is off. He undergoes a transformation, revealing his true identity as Jadis. Glenn had suspected this twist before it became too late. Jadis drops a bombshell, explaining that the real Leos had died after consuming Angel's dust. Understanding the gravity of the situation, Glenn urges Sistine to run away, convinced that they do not belong in the same world as Jadis. He knows they must separate for their safety, and Sistine obeys, fleeing from the danger. Jadis unveils his true motives. He used to be a member of the court and is now on a quest to find the Akashic Records. These records hold the power to control the fundamental principles of the world. To achieve his goal, Jadis believes he must eliminate those he deems threats within the Empire, including Glenn. He intends to carry out this mission using his powerful tulpas. Glenn and Jadis engage in a fierce battle, but Jadis gains the upper hand, injuring Glenn. Just when things look bleak, Sistine rushes in to rescue him, preventing Jadis from getting away. She pleads with Glenn to be the teacher he once was, explaining that she doesn't want to lose the person he's become. These words strike a chord with Glenn, and he finally asks for Sistine's help in defeating Jadis, albeit with a bit of a nudge from Sistine. Together, they form a powerful team. Sistine takes on the Tulpas, using her magic to boost Glenn's strength. With their combined effort, Glenn lands the decisive blow on Jadis, defeating him. As the battle concludes, Sistine's mana reserves are depleted, and Glenn rushes to check on her. Meanwhile, Jadis seizes the opportunity to escape using his magic. Glenn gently picks up Sistine, who's very tired from the battle. His students gather around, worried about what's happening. Glenn asks Sistine if she truly wants him to remain her teacher, to which she confidently replies, yes. With her answer, Glenn carries her back to the academy. The next day at the academy, Glenn gets a surprise visit from Sistine, Rumia, and Rel. They're all excited to learn from him and call him to start the class. Glenn is touched by their enthusiasm. Meanwhile, Celica, their school's headmaster, informs Glenn that she'll be away exploring an underground labyrinth for a few days. This means Glenn will be in charge alone. However, he's not worried, and Celica can't help but smile seeing Glenn's dedication to teaching. With a cheerful spirit, Glenn begins the class. His students are eager to learn, and Glenn, with a newfound sense of purpose and joy, starts teaching them. The future seems bright, and Glenn is ready to guide his students to become skilled mages. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.